Relatively recently, I was reading this interesting paper where the scientific team was able to create a relatively interesting new way of designing silkworm silk that would produce the material several times stronger than the typical spider silk, which would also mean that it would be stronger than steel. And because in this case it was produced by using silkworm, it would be relatively easy to mass produce this, creating quite a lot of silk in the process. In this case, to make the silk really strong, the scientists had to do several post-processing steps, including boiling the silk in a specific way, in order to achieve the necessary results. But as I was reading this, I had this burning question. The question that many of us have had for a really long time. Would this silk be good enough to produce space elevators? The science fiction concept that's actually very scientific after all. The concept that involves a really really long strain suspended from the geostationary orbit that would then serve as a kind of an elevator shaft that could be used to deliver things into space really really cheap. Alas, the strength of this particular silk is still not strong enough. It's still not really there to be able to produce this and to be able to suspend something from an extremely high altitude. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. So in this video, we're going to be exploring the idea of space elevators and answering a simple question. Where exactly are we with this technology? Do we actually have the necessary technology to produce something that would effectively function as an actual space elevator without the use of very inefficient rockets by literally just lifting things into the orbit via some kind of a suspension device. Something that may sound like science fiction as I mentioned before, but something that it is certainly not. It is based on a lot of actual science, and more importantly, there are actual scientists actively working on trying to solve this problem. But let's start with a bit of a history and where all of this started. And not surprisingly, like a lot of other ideas involving some kind of a space exploration or launching something into space, all of this started with the Soviet rocket scientists Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the father of rocketry as he's also known, the person responsible for developing the rocket equation. In 1895, a few years after the completion of the Eiffel Tower, he got the opportunity to visit the tower where he, for the first time ever, witnessed the elevator in action. Back then, for many people, this was their first experience with any elevator anywhere. But in his case, his imagination ran wild afterwards. He started to imagine what it would actually be like to try to build these as high as possible. As a matter of fact, around the same time, he was exploring the idea of geostationary orbit. The orbit around planet Earth, where you would always be somewhere above the same location, simply because you would orbit at the same speed as the rotation of planet Earth. And so he imagined that, in theory, you could build an elevator that goes all the way up there, and thus always stays above the same point on planet Earth. But he also wanted to do a bit of math. And specifically, he wanted to calculate if he could actually build such an elevator by stacking various structures from the surface of planet Earth several thousand kilometers into the air, realizing pretty quickly that no material on Earth could ever support such a structure. And so that particular thought experiment ended pretty quickly. But his idea was calling for what's known as a compression structure, not a suspension structure that we're going to be discussing today. And in this case, instead of having a stack of objects, you basically suspend something from up there in outer space. And these modern ideas generally started to be proposed in the 50s and in the 60s by various Soviet engineers and American engineers, with this being one of the articles you can read. But popularized by the iconic Arthur C. Clarke, who famously said that the space elevator would be built 50 years after everyone stopped laughing. Because even though the idea sounds kind of silly, it totally could work if we had the right materials. But the common question that everyone asks about space elevators is, how exactly is it going to be held in space and what exactly is it suspended from? Well, the real answer is nothing, but the more exact answer involves the idea of a counterweight. So somewhere past the geostationary orbit, the suspension thread would keep going for at least a few thousand more kilometers and eventually be ended in some kind of a counterweight that would be moving at pretty much the same velocity as everything else along the thread. But because the orbital velocity in the geostationary orbit is much higher than the orbital speed much higher up, and because the counterweight in this case would be moving faster than the orbital velocity, this would result at a strong pull at the thread, preventing it from falling to the ground, with the bigger counterweight allowing us to hypothetically lift much heavier objects. Some studies have even suggested using some kind of a captured asteroid as a potential counterweight, but that's maybe a little bit beyond our technology right now with several studies even proposing a relatively brilliant technique for how to deploy this without the use of much fuel or without using too many rockets. By placing the initial structure somewhere in a geostationary orbit, it can then become possible 
to start suspending the thread in both directions, going up and down away from the structure, with the bottom eventually reaching planet Earth and the top eventually becoming the counterweight. By doing so at the same time, the structure never actually loses altitude and maintains relative stability as the rest of the structure is developed. Which once again means that none of this is science fiction and all of this technically is possible, or at least physically possible. But why would you want to have this when the rockets clearly work just fine? Well, the main reason is of course the cost. Rocket launches are really expensive. Today the average price for launching something into space is anywhere between $1400 to $2700 per kilogram. And that's even using some of the modern SpaceX rockets. This on the other hand would cost much much lower, anywhere between $100 to $200 per kilogram or even less as the technology develops. And since only about 2% of the total weight of the rocket gets delivered into space, this right here does seem like the natural next step. And so I guess the next question is, so why do they not exist yet? Well, there's always been one major problem, one part missing. Even though the elevator technology or the counterweight is not going to be impossible to produce, it's the suspension cable itself that's always been the challenge in terms of technology. And that's of course why I started the story with that silk. Up until a few years ago, we still did not really have a good idea what exactly could be used to produce such a strong cable that would actually allow for something to be suspended for thousands and thousands of kilometers without breaking and without snapping. Steel would definitely not work, natural silk would also not be strong enough, and even genetically modified silk is still a little bit weaker than it should be. So for example, one of the strongest materials used in military, Kevlar, invented by the wonderful Stephanie Kulak, despite being really light and really strong, if turned into some kind of a cable, would only be able to suspend itself for 200 kilometers before snapping. But we would require something in thousands of kilometers for this cable to work. And the problem is, if you try to strengthen Kevlar with, for example, different metals, it also becomes heavier and thus snaps even faster. Because in this case, you really want the cable to be as light as possible and as strong as possible. In comparison, the strongest steel cable would only be able to survive approximately 50 kilometers. And so it was really the tether that's always been the biggest problem. How can we produce it and what exactly can we make it out of? And while well, this has been tackled pretty much every year, during the International Space Elevator Consortium, which as the name implies, is basically a meetup for scientists to try to solve this space elevator problem. Here are just some of the people behind this particular consortium. And it just so happens that not so long ago, in 2022, September of 2022, they will officially confirm that this particular problem has been kind of solved. We now definitely have the material that's able to create these cables and that's able to create suspension structures thousands of kilometers in length. And it's the material that's kind of based on something we've discussed before, but just a little bit different. What you're looking at right here is known as the carbon nanotube. Essentially a three-dimensional structure involving carbon that forms these relatively long nanotubes that intriguingly become extremely strong and practically unbreakable and also start to possess a lot of electrical properties, including becoming a superconductor in certain conditions. After these were originally discovered, they were actually almost right away proposed to be pretty much a perfect candidate for any kind of a space elevator. But there was a problem. This was a three-dimensional structure that could only be created in perfect conditions in very small samples. And anything that's bigger than a certain size would always end up producing some kind of a unusual abnormality that would dramatically lower the strength of the structure. And so the issue of mass production of carbon nanotubes has been the biggest problem in trying to make this a reality. For example, the maximum length so far produced by the Chinese scientists was only about 20 inches or 50 centimeters. Anything longer than that starts to produce a lot of different problems and reduces the overall strength. But then we have something that's kind of similar, but somewhat different. We have something called graphene, the material that resulted in a Nobel Prize in 2010. And the material that, unlike carbon nanotubes, is two-dimensional, meaning that it's a lot easier to maintain the overall structure. And just like the carbon nanotubes, it seems to possess relatively similar properties, similar electrical properties. But more importantly, a single sheet of graphene has a relative tensile strength 200 times as strong as steel, able to support the pressure of 130 gigapascal. But for a space elevator, we actually require something that's slightly lower, 50 gigapascal. And just to give you a comparison, structural steel has a strength of 550 million pascal, about 100 times less than we actually need for the space elevator. And during the 73rd International Astronomical Congress in Paris, France, there was quite a lot of excitement from the paper presented by the Space Elevator Consortium. You can learn more about this on their website 
but in their presentation, they've actually showed that officially, graphene has now reached the production capacity where we can definitely produce something that's kilometer scale in size. With all of these new developments happening in just the last two years, for example, some of the MIT scientists developed a continuous roll technique that could create large sheets of graphene at the rate of 2 meters per minute, something that up until recently was pretty much impossible. But during these initial tests, they've actually established that the tensile strength that this new material possessed was much higher than predicted. It was approximately 6 times higher than initially thought nearly 900 gigapascal. But more intriguingly, only a few months ago, another company from South Korea officially became the leader in the manufacturing of graphene, claiming that they can actually easily produce something that's at least one kilometer in length. With most of this only being announced in the last two years, since 2020. And so essentially we're reaching the point where the technology is exploding now, it's reaching new heights, with more and more companies joining in on the potentially huge market. The market where the material is also becoming much cheaper to produce. For example, to manufacture one single tether for the space elevator, using modern technology in 2022, it would cost approximately $18 billion. That's a little bit less than the total NASA budget for 2022. So basically not ultra expensive, but definitely still not really cheap. But it's believed that in just the next few years, this will very likely decrease dramatically, making the overall cost approximately $3 billion per tether suggesting that the total cost of a typical space elevator might actually not be much higher than building some kind of a skyscraper. Just to give you an example, the One World Trade Center was a little bit more expensive at approximately $4 billion. But because this would also dramatically lower the cost of sending things to space and would also present us with an opportunity to build a lot of structures in space by delivering a lot of materials pretty quick, we could now be at the crossroads where all of this could become a reality within just the next decade. Mostly because of these recent developments in our ability to produce graphene very efficiently and much cheaper than before. Not to mention that graphene is already believed to be some kind of a super material that could potentially be used in so many technologies on the planet and is already actively used today. It's used in LED technologies, it's used in superconductors and could actually be used in a lot more technologies where its electrical properties are exceptionally useful. And so this super material could actually help us reach the next stage of the industrial evolution. But more importantly, it would help us reach the next stage of the space evolution. It could help us replace rockets once and for all. Which ironically is approximately 50 years after Arthur C. Clarke officially said that space elevators could become a reality 50 years after we stopped laughing. And it looks like it's slowly becoming a reality after all. This could be how we launch things into space, allowing us to reach a completely new level of technology. But until someone takes the reins and starts to produce these, it's all going to remain a theory. A sound theory with a lot of science behind it, but someone still has to produce one and has to somehow make it work. And so until we actually hear about some company somewhere out there developing one, I guess that's pretty much it. Looks like officially space elevators could become a reality. But when is the question that nobody can answer just yet. It definitely needs to happen though, and preferably relatively soon. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.